And we're back. Were we ever gone? <laughs> I was playing Bravely Default. Where were you? Also playing Bravely Default and Bioshock Infinite and DuckTales Remastered and editing audio. And I was playing Link Between Worlds and I was getting more time in on Dream Team so I could do a review and I was running around getting MLP toys very selfishly not getting you any and not thinking that maybe I should get you any. <laughs> ah. Hello. Off to the races or thoughts we go. Hello, I am Luxbrush. <laughs> I'm sorry, your voice just sounded so different right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And again! Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 20, Leap of Faith. Ah, Big Mac, I love how comfortable you are with yourself. I mean, you swing around with a, you know, a younger person's flotation device. It's great! And he has a t stuffed doll in his room. Well, I would think he might need a flotation device, considering he's still wearing the harness. <laughs> but it floats, as we see later in the episode. True. And more backstory on Granny Smith. Wow, she was an adventurous young girl. I mean, swimming and high diving? Wow. And let's not forget when she ran off into the Everfree Forest and found the, the Zap Apples. Mm -hmm. She was a very ambitious young person. No wonder she was one of the founders of Ponyville, or around at that time anyways. Yeah, she was a little young to be a founder. She was there when it was founded. And now moving on, and Applejack says, Wow, I wonder where every pony's headed. All popped into my head is, AJ, why aren't you thinking, why is everyone so injured? That's the first thing I thought. My first thought was, Okay, is this music, like, hypnotizing? Like the Cenebula episode in Gen 1 MLP? And then my second thought was, why is everybody injured? Also, when I first heard the music, I went, no, we can't be. Bringing back Flim and Flam already? Nah. And then it was them. Not that I have any problem with bringing Flim and Flam back, but... I mean, there's other characters that everyone wants back that have been in older seasons in Flim and Flam. I mean, Flim and Flam was season two, I believe. My main thing with it being Flim and Flam is after they failed so spectacularly, why would they come back to Ponyville? Yeah. Unless this is someplace far on the outskirts of Ponyville, and these ponies aren't actually from Ponyville is all I'm thinking now. Because we never actually see how close it is to Ponyville. But the other ponies knew Applejack. So at the very least, they're from the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. And enough so that they come into Ponyville. Because they can't all just be coming to Sweet Apple Acres and know Applejack that way. Yeah, and if this is citizens from Ponyville, it kind of kind of paints them in a bad light to be this gullible twice. Especially poor Granny Smith. I don't think she'd trust them in Flam so easily. I know. It's, it seems very out of character for... Applejack and Big Mac to both be immediately bothered. And for Granny Smith, who is very smart, to go in on this at all just does not really seem believable to me. I mean, I figured she'd hold a grudge going and she'd be saying something like, What are you two yahoos doing here? <laughs> ah, moving on to their little song. I like their first song better. You know, the one in season two. This one felt okay to me. Well, that one was much more intriguing, I think. And it did a better job of pulling you into their hype. And even though they're scoundrels, their first song was more honest. I mean, their cider was good cider. They were just trying to leverage their production power and get an advantage and goad the Apple family into risking more than they should. This time they're just outright lying snakes. Yeah, they're actually being flimflams. Mm -hmm. And moving on to details about the song, I think there's actually a Doctor Who reference inside the song with that image of Doctor, or at least a pony that looks like Doctor Who with a bunch of question marks around him. 
I thought that might be, but I wasn't sure. Me either. I just thought I'd toss that out there because like, it's possible. Someone somewhere will think that. Well, at least they're using a classic sham this time, right down to the crippled walking again. I know. It's so incredibly classic that it's hard to believe people are falling for it. And again, where did all these injured ponies come from? Yeah, because I think if there was a big catastrophe in Ponyville, we would have seen that episode. Yeah, it's almost like there was a giant Pinkie Pie party that went horribly wrong. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of injuries. This could be Pinkie's fault. <laughs> Not that she's ever injured anyone, per se, but it's just kind of like an image that pops into your head. Well, she did drop that giant pinata cake on Rainbow Dash, but since it was comedic, apparently it didn't really hurt. And moving back to the presentation, wow, thank you for those wonderful images. I just, ugh. <laughs> Just uh, even the imagery during the song where they point out people in the audience, I'm like, oh, I do not need to see this. No, I mean, the upside to that was that we had a lot of diversity in pony design again. But some of those people didn't look well enough to be out and about. How on earth did they even decide, oh, hey, let me go to this random tent in this field? For no reason. Yeah, and there were also a lot of ponies in the audience in wheelchairs or something like that. I was actually kind of surprised at the injuries they chose for the audience. Which had me originally thinking that there was more than one plant in the audience. And moving on now to fishing with apples? What are they trying to catch? Well, considering that as ponies they should be vegetarians... Why would they actually want to catch anything? Yeah, that's a good point now that I think about it. Ponies don't eat fish, so why are they trying to catch fish? Or whatever apples are supposed to catch when you go fishing. Well, that's what I'm saying is they're not going to catch a fish with an apple, I wouldn't think. Though, considering the variety of animals in Equestria, it's possible. But I think it was more to have the visual imagery of fishing, which is what a lot of people do when they go out to a lake or a stream. And, you know, we can't have them dangling a worm on a hook. But, you know, maybe it's a game. Like a kingfisher type bird would come and take the apple. Or maybe an otter would take the apple and the otter would pull the rope and they could, like, water ski with it or something. <laughs> And now, the wonderful power of the placebo effect. Granny, Granny Smith believes, believes that she is cured, so therefore, she is. Yep, believes that she shouldn't be afraid, therefore, she's not afraid. Believes that she has more energy, therefore, is more energetic. And a nice jump to action from the rest of the Apple family there. But I was also wondering, why don't they notice that she's not in distress? I think just because they're panicking so much. You know, Granny Smith in the water equals drowning. There's no other answer to that equation because they just stated in the beginning of the episode that she does not swim anymore and that she is afraid to. So therefore, if she's in the water, she must be in trouble. And now we get Apple Bloom and Apple Jack going off to find out exactly what's going on. And then we get to find out that there's more than one presentation of this stuff. And all I'm thinking is, okay, the population density of ponyville should be, you know, light enough that you wouldn't get a rotation of different ponies. So someone should have noticed, especially since the guy was using the same costume and get up, that something's not right here. Yeah. And he really shouldn't have been using the same costume two performances in a row. I mean, he's shown to have several. Mm-hmm. Well, he did pull a nice getaway, though, with somehow getting steam from the pipe organ, I think it was. Classic smokescreen. Yeah, convenient smokescreen. <laughs> and he runs off to his bosses, who, in their usual insidious way, twist the truth in such a way that... Hmm. I liked how nonchalant they were, because they knew that Applejack already knew that they were cheats, and that they knew they had something to keep her quiet. Now, it was very... Insidious and sinister is very calm of, oh, so what if it is? But, you know, if she's feeling better and, oh, gee, wouldn't you hate to disappoint her? 
Yep, the classic conundrum of telling the truth will hurt someone, but perpetuating the lie will keep them happy. I'm also glad that the tonic is non-toxic, at least to humans. And presumably to ponies, since beets are a vegetable and the leaves are a reasonable green to eat. It's just, I'm very glad there was nothing toxic in it. Well, they couldn't put anything toxic in it, anything that would have had bad side effects, because then Applejack wouldn't have been able to keep quiet about it, and we wouldn't have had this lesson about lying and telling the truth. Well, that's another point to bring up us. Wait a minute, Applejack not being stubborn? Are we sure this is an Applejack episode? Uh, she was being more normal level stubborn, or a reasonable level of stubborn of... Um, are you sure you should be doing all that? Uh, don't you think maybe you want to take it a little easy? You know, during this episode I was wondering if Earth ponies don't have the longest longevity of the basic species of ponies. Because, whoa, since we know it's not the tonic doing it for her, dang, she's sprightly for an old elderly pony. Well, that was one heck of a placebo effect. But at one point during the swim meet, I was actually wondering if Flim and Flam were lending a little unicorn magic aid. I don't think so. Even if it's being sneaky, the animators would show that they were doing something. True. It just briefly crossed my mind when I saw them on the sidelines holding up the tonic with the unicorn magic. And going back to just before the swim meet, that was a whole lot of bits. <laughs> I'm surprised Applejack didn't go... But, Granny, that's money for the farm! I know, considering that so many episodes about Applejack or the Apple family are focused in, we need this income for the farm, this is a big opportunity for the farm, you know, this money is to maintain the farm. We need money for the farm! <laughs> Which, I know that it takes a lot of money to run and maintain a farm, but founding family of Ponyville, I'm pretty sure that unless some pony mortgaged it, they should own the land outright. Because they didn't have to buy it from anyone because it was established as part of the beginnings of Ponyville. Not that maintenance is inexpensive, buying seat. Though, how much expense do you really have? Because we don't seem to have electricity. The farming is done by the three younger members of the Apple family. We don't ever see any farm hands. I love how you bring up points like that right out of nowhere. It's like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> I just thought, like, oh, yeah, they should talk about money. Why are they spending it? And then, wow, she brings up so many possibilities. This is why I like talking to her. <laughs> and speaking of talking, I like how Applejack still tries to tell the truth by kind of hedging it a little bit, like, well, it worked for Granny. Yeah, and saying it seems to be working for Granny, which immediately gets twisted into Applejack approved. And we all know how honest Applejack is, therefore this stuff is amazing. Yep, just like Flim and Flam to take any opportunity to make sales happen. With all this endorsement... How many bottles did they actually sell, and how many ponies tried it, and did anyone not get the expected results? I mean, there is something to be said for the placebo effect, but if you're in a wheelchair, you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. And, you know, th those rashes aren't just going to magically go away. You know, this is also a kind of twisted version of the white lie scenario. You know, where someone tells a small white lie and it eventually snowballs into something bigger and out of control. Mm -hmm. And we had dolphins in the previous episode, and now we have someone with an actual dolphin cutie mark. <laughs> the first tide diver we see jumping off the board. Well, a sea creature is a reasonable cutie mark for someone who is a diver. And moving back to the routine that you mentioned earlier, that was a nice routine, but admitting to drinking a tonic beforehand, isn't it kind of like admitting that you doped before a sports competition? Basically, because you took a performance-enhancing substance before you competed. I can see the headlines now. Granny Smith dopes to win swimming competition. Film at 11. But considering that the tonic is more of a homeopathic remedy, 
it wouldn't necessarily fall under a banned substance, even though the result in being a performance enhancer is the same. And now moving on to Granny Smith's high dive. Realistically, I think Applejack would have had to have grabbed her earlier and decelerated her differently to have not injured her, or worse, in real life, or physically. I know we're talking about cartoon ponies here, but I think the physics are a little stretched in that scene. Probably, but in terms of stretching, diving into a nine-inch pie plate, basically. Yeah, well, realistically, you could do it if, the, if it was a um, kid's swimming pool. All you need to do is make yourself nice and flat and not actually dive into it like a normal dive. You actually have to belly flop into it and the water absorbs enough, disperses the stress enough that you actually don't get injured much. Children's swimming pool, I could see. That was a pie dish. You can barely get two hooves into it. Yeah, and that's what makes it unrealistic. <laughs> and that's probably why she failed the first time. She doesn't quite know how to dive into a shallow surface and survive. Well, at least to survive uninjured. And I like how they did the rainbow sign this time. It was... It felt more natural happening than some of the other ones. It actually glinted through the glass of the bottle, creating an actual rainbow effect. Something that would have actually caused a rainbow because the glass can act as a prism. Where most of the other items where we've seen the rainbow sheen, there's no logical explanation for the rainbow sheen. And... I know that the names in Equestria tend to end up being descriptive of what a character is like. I mean, Flem and Flam is bad enough. But who on earth would name their child Silver Shell? Shell, really? That's what you want for your child, is to be a shell. I didn't actually realize exactly what it meant. I, I, I know he was a plant, but I didn't realize his name was that much of showing that he was a plant. Yeah, it's the only other interpretation I could come up with for the name, since it had silver at the beginning, was that Shell was short for shelling. Like, um, so is that all your child is worth, is a silver shilling? <laughs> Which doesn't even make sense, because the physical coinage of Equestria seems to be bits, even though we often end up paying in gemstones. Bits, gemstones, I still don't get it. Yeah, the economics of Equestria would baffle the mind of the best economic minds over here, I bet. <laughs> You're like, I don't get this. This gem is worth this much, but this is worth this much. And I just... Oh, the, the... <laughs> Wait until you hear the puns. No. And how did Flem and Flam mock up those Applejack-approved posters so quickly? When did they get her photograph? When did they have time to get it developed? When did they get those posters made? I don't think they're actual photos. I think by the way they're rendered, they're actually paintings. Still, who painted them? When did they have the time? And usually endorsers are compensated. And usually to use someone's endorsement, you have to have their agreement which she never gave, and she never actually endorsed it. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit about that endorsement, too. I was like, I don't know about this whole endorsement thing. We've had it before in other episodes. But I'm surprised Applejack hasn't said at least, well, don't use me too much. <laughs> I can only keep this secret for so long, and then, and then Granny Smith does something dangerous, and oops, yeah, I can't tell this lie anymore. They're a sham! Really? Yeah, you can't tell? No! I think their names kind of pointed out. Really? Yeah, Flim and Flam. Oh, now that you say it like that! You know, and also the song and dance routine, instead of a, you know, nice clear-cut presentation of why you should want this elixir. You know, some nice scientific charts. <laughs> yes, charts thrill everyone. We all love charts. Hey, something to look at, and, you know, some studies to back it up and i don't know naming the active ingredient and why it's so amazing though of course we had that long list of quickly spoken side effects <laughs> like you're like why should i be taking this drug again <laughs> sounds like it's worse than a disease i don't think i would ever trust anything that someone tried to sell me by song <laughs> <laughs> well i guess that's why you buy most of our stuff from amazon and not based on tv commercials <laughs> We have to see the TV commercials before we're influenced by them. 
that would require that I watch more TV. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm the only one who actually watches real TV every now and then. Yeah, YouTube's enough TV for me. <laughs> it's a treasure trove to get lost in and get scared in, then run from and come back and go, I don't know why I stay. But moving on to more pony thoughts. Okay, so Applejack's item is a bit. How is she going to keep track of that one bit compared to every other bit that she and the entire family has? How is she not going to turn around and spend it at the market next week? <laughs> Who knows? That could be a part of the um, episode where they finally get all the keys together. Wait, wait. You spent your... Yeah, well, it's a bit. <laughs> when they have to go and track it down. <laughs> and they end up back in Canterlot. <laughs> Yeah, and how are you going to pick out one bit from all the other bits? Well, it would be Rainbow Shine. <laughs> or Pinkie Pie goes, I think it's this one. How do you know that, Pinkie? Well, it kind of glints like a rainbow. <laughs> yeah, but it just didn't really make sense to me. I mean, I can understand Silver wanting to give up the bit because he got it through dishonest means. But then just give it back to the pony you got it from. Not, okay, here, Applejack, you take this one, and then I'm going to go find that pony and give him another bit. You're now negative one bit. So you're paying Applejack, technically, because it's a bit. You and your money-wise mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're now negative money. Why would you do that? <laughs> well, if you want to make reparations, then you give the money back to the person you took it from. You want to reward Applejack for her honesty, which is what we were trying to do. How about not doing it with something that you've labeled as tainted? You're getting rid of it because you got it through dishonest means. Isn't that technically the definition of money laundering? <laughs> I don't know. I vaguely remember the definition of that illegal term. Taking money from an illegal source and processing it through some other medium so that it becomes um, usable funds. I guess I didn't put enough sarcasm in that. I was joking about not knowing the definition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your sarcasm meter is usually way off. <laughs> uh, though, surprisingly enough, it kind of, I guess it's because I've been playing the DuckTailed Remastered game, kind of semi reminded me of the number one dime. I mean, because it was a single bit, so it kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, at least a dime has a year on it and a mark for what mint it's from. So far, all bits look alike. <laughs> well, simplification, there's so many of them. Though, well, technically, you can copy and paste, but... Still, you know, when they first showed bits, I'm sure that this idea was not even a glimmering yet. Going back to Granny Smith, why on earth did she need that swimming outfit? And why on earth, if she hasn't swum in forever, did she even have a swimming outfit? Uh, either she bought one or she still has that one and she's as good at taking care of clothes as you are. I was kind of under the impression that she stopped diving slash swimming when she was much younger. So I would think she would have been closer to Apple Bloom's size, in which case her old swimsuit would not have fit. And that looked a little old-fashioned for her to have been able to turn around and buy it in Ponyville. I got the impression from the flashback that she was actually the same age as Applejack. Okay, point conceded. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only because I don't think you'll be able to refute this one. <laughs> okay, the point of a swim cap is to keep your hair dry and to keep it from getting tangled and, you know, f so that it doesn't provide resistance in the water. So as a pony, if you're going to wear a swim cap, shouldn't there also be a tail cap? I think it'd probably be called a sock, but hmm, maybe. Though that was it's more styled after the older swimsuits, which weren't practical at all, human-wise, anyways. Well, yeah. Because I understand some of the older swimsuits that women were first to wear were more likely to kill you than to help you swim. Mm -hmm. I was speaking both to Granny Smith's more old-fashioned outfit and the diver ponies at the competition. Oh, yeah. There were 
other ponies swimming there. I completely forgot about that, even though I mentioned the diver. Derp. Yeah, and considering the swim competition, everyone else we showed was diving. Well, we saw the one diver, and then everyone else who went in the water looked like they just jumped in the water. It didn't look like there was really a routine. So what sort of swim meet was this? Oh, yeah, and mentioning the swim meet again reminded me of the fact that you got Laura Heartstrings as a judge. <laughs> and she seems to be playing the mean judge until, ooh, perfect ten. Oh, I was like, a one. Oh, wait, I'm in a perfect ten. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a judge stereotype that there's always that one that always scores low. Especially if they're from another country who wants to win. Mm -hmm. Overall, it was a well-balanced, decently paced episode. It's a good episode to just sit back and enjoy. Well, it was nice pacing, good build up, reasonable tension, Applejack having a real conflict and not just Applejack's being stubborn. I think my main problem was Granny Smith being so gullible. I don't see where she would have had any reason to trust the Flim Flam brothers at all. But other than that, it was quite enjoyable. Thank you for watching, and before we move on to our usual closing, I'd like to thank Sasami-chan for commenting again. And thank you for Suzumi-chan's comment um, relating back to some of the points we brought up about Luna in our last episode regarding the privacy issues of dreamwalking and if this is a source of information for Luna about what the modern world is like and maybe helped her adjust to the modern world and the possibility of what dreams were like during the time that Luna was imprisoned and how does she figure out which ponies actually need her help. My theory on that particular part is that there's a spell she has that monitors the stress level of ponies and also the context of that stress and whether or not she should actually intervene to keep things from getting too dangerous. And I do think Luna respects the privacy of her and Celestia's ponies. I would like to think that Luna would be a respecter of privacy, but even with having some way of judging when she should intervene in somebody's dream, not everyone may appreciate the assistance, and it could be seen by some as more of an invasion than help, since it is help unasked for. Hmm, that's a good point. I didn't think of that, that there would actually be people, even though it's helpful, who would reject Luna for trying to help. Well, there are people who just don't admit that they need help. Apple bucking season? <laughs> Yep, that's a good point. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a comment below. If you'd like to see high-resolution versions of Lux's artwork, you can check him out over on DeviantArt. If you'd like to follow the progress of these episodes, head on over to Tumblr, where Lux will be posting updates and has agreed to answer questions. Polite questions only, please. Thank you. Links in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 20, Leap of Faith, along with some comments expanding on For Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils from our last episode.